this mandible finished, except for I need to cut out the stop, but we'll do that here in a minute. Get the other side covered, and then we'll clear the stop so we finalize it. Okay, so I'm going to slightly overlap the wax there at the midline, not significantly, just a little bit. And when you have a resorbed ridge like this, sometimes you have to adapt this wax kind of around initially to get it to adhere to the cast. Okay? Again, as it's warm, it's a little bit more translucent. So if I trim this right away, I can take advantage of that and I can see my line. While it's warm, it peels a lot easier. It doesn't fracture as much on you. Now this patient has a lot of resorption. You all know anatomy enough to know where the mandibular nerve is, right? Runs right along. The inferior alveolar nerve runs all the way along this area. Let me get this off and I'll kind of demonstrate it here. So the mandibular nerve is running down along this line, the, the alveolar nerve right here through the mandibular canal. When patients have severe resorption like this, sometimes the, the, the bone can resorb so much that that canal can be exposed. And so when you touch this patient's ridge right here, it can actually hurt. You can excite that nerve doing that. Because this denture is gonna put a lot of pressure on this patient's ridge and it's so severely resorbed, sometimes I like to have a little extra block out in these scenarios so that I know that I don't compress too much when I make my impression, thus my denture won't compress a lot. So I'm gonna actually come back and do just another thin layer and you're gonna see I'm gonna really thin it out. So I'm gonna get it a little bit warmer than I have been. So it's kind of running, not really drooping, but more running. And I'm going to do a super thin line. And I'm going to put it right over top of that ridge back there. And right over top of the ridge right here. And again, this is what changes. Well, this is what makes concepts so important because if you just make a custom tray the same for every patient, you're going to miss out on opportunities to maximize everything about dentures that you're learning this semester. If you can maximize that with small changes, modifications in your tray design, your result will be much better for it. And in my opinion, we don't do enough of teaching you all about modifying the fundamentals. And so my goal is to, to try to do a better job of that so that you all can apply knowledge rather than just copying it, okay? So my anatomy isn't as smooth here as it is when it's all one piece, but I have the relief that I want and it's pretty even, okay, from side to side. So I'm gonna cut out my buckle shelf areas. Now, where is that? It's really good to turn your hand out torches off, just close them up um, because you will burn through a lot of alcohol and when you come in on the weekend and the alcohol is empty, you're going to wish you had some because no one's around to, to fill it up for you. Okay, so I'm going to cut out my buckle shelf. Same thing on this side. Okay, so it's going to look something like that. Super little, right? This is tiny. It's a good thing my tray is going to come out to here and not stop there. Otherwise, this would be really difficult to manage. I'm going to flame just a little bit of wax in there. I did want to fill this area right here. That was an just because that area is getting pretty thin, I don't want to risk it. Okay. 
You can see I'm just manipulating the wax while it's still warm. Okay, I'm happy with that. Put my tin foil on. So here is where tin foil really likes to tear. So I like to just kind of get it down in the middle first and then extend toward the sides. You just kind of have to tug and play on it. It'll eventually work the way you want it to. Okay, so the buckle shelf looks a little bit different than your tooth stops and the palette because now when I have this, I see where this is, but I have no indication of how far out I need to go. That's why a land area is really beneficial because now I can see where does the vestibule stop and I know how far out to, I know I can't go past this point. Do I need to go all the way out there? No, but I have a reference. And that's why a land area is good and even in the primary phase. Okay, so you can see it's undercut here. Okay, so if I, I can block this out with wax or I can just know not to ex not to push my tray all the way down into that area and I'm going to do it without blocking it out. I've done this before so I, I have an idea. For you guys at this stage of the game I would probably recommend blocking out that area. This side's not so bad. This side's pretty severely undercut and I don't want to break my tray. All right, so some Vaseline. <coughs> and some tray material. So again, if you all watched the video from last week, I'm going to come in and cut out this middle section. She doesn't need much up here. It's very skinny. So I can come up pretty high. And I know I want to avoid that undercut here, so I'm going to go skinnier on this side when I flip it in there. Again, everything I'm doing is very intentional. Okay, so I'm going to flip it so that the skinnier side is in that area so I don't get into that undercut. Start adapting this to the cast. And I'm avoiding that undercut area right there. I'm gonna get that when I do my impression compound. I'll pick up that area before I make the master impression. love doing this with the 20 blade versus the the handle or the bar, buffalo knife. This Bard Parker handle and a 20 blade is my favorite way to do it. I can get these edges much smoother. Getting a little bit thin right there. I'm going to add just a hair back on this buckle shelf, partially just because I don't have a lot of thickness anywhere. I want to make sure that I maintain contact there. I like the buckle shelf here. I'm too wide on this part, so I'm going to bring it down. Now I'm going to cover the retromolar pad area and avoid that undercut. Doing both here. Okay, so I'm actually leaving a little bit of a gap right there intentionally. On this side, I'm not going to leave that gap. I'm going to keep it at the line of the wax. And all of this is arbitrary right here. This is all cast. 
all stone from the tongue space. So I'm bringing that up to cover the ridge, keeping it as flat as possible. Very good. Trim this retromolar pad back here and then we'll build a handle. Something like that is what you should have. Here I want my tray handle to be long and skinny. A little bit taller. I want to support this thin layer of, of triad here. It's just flat and brittle. First just meld all of this together. Get rid of the excess. And I need it to be pretty skinny up here up front. If it's too wide, it's going to go out over the periphery of my tray, and I don't want that. So I can extend this back a little bit. Give me some strength, some support. Some people call this a strut. Some people do struts in another step of dentures, which is called a record base. I don't like to do them there. Um, we'll talk about that as we go, but um, they call it a strut just because it's supporting that brittle area. Okay, so I'm blending this all the way around, not just in a few spots. I want it to be continuous material. I don't want areas of voids where it has risk of fracture and breaking. I'm trying to keep this at an angle you all can see. And I'm just pulling the, the new material onto the top of the old material. I'm using a little Vaseline. You can also use water. I actually prefer to use water. It's cleaner. I'm going to shape my edges a little bit. Mm -hmm. Now I can cure this. Good. Intentionally avoiding that undercut back.